Hey there, BroB223 here, and thanks for tuning in to another episode in my series of 12-gauge shotgun ammunition tests. This is episode 2.2, a long-range gelatin test of Hornady's 12-gauge heavy magnum coyote nickel-plated lead BB with the Versatite wad. I reviewed this same round in episode 1.2, however the format for that test was a 5-yard gelatin test, followed by a series of 25-yard pattern tests designed to illustrate the round's performance through a variety of different choke. This test is designed a bit differently. Its purpose is to illustrate the effect of distance on terminal penetration, so I'm going to use the same gun to shoot gelatin from 5 yards, 20 yards, and 40 yards. I've done long range tests of number 4 and double up buckshot too, so if you have not seen them yet and are curious about their penetration characteristics at 40 yards, be sure to check out my channel where they're listed as long range shotgun tests. Here's the H70 police mag I'm using for the long range tests. If you've seen the other two episodes, you'll probably remember that in the previous test I conducted that day, this H70 police's shell lifter was giving me some serious grief. So for this test, I swapped out the trigger group with one for my H70 Express, and the gun worked fine for the rest of the day's tests. Let's get started. Oh, but before we get too far, I'll also mention that I ordered a new shelter from Brownells and it arrived last week. It installed super easy and works great, so I swapped the guns back to their original configuration. Okay, now back to talking about the test. From a range of 5 yards, I fired one round into the gelatin block you see on the left, and then from 20 yards, I just fired three rounds into the middle block. Now, from all the way back at 40 yards, I'm going to fire three rounds into the block on the right. Let's walk up together now and check out the BB penetration into those gelatin blocks. The gelatin I'm using is a 250 bloom pork gelatin carefully prepared as a 10% by weight solution with water. They've been stored at 4 degrees Celsius for the past week and immediately prior to shooting this test I calibrated each block by shooting it with a copper plated steel BB, being very careful to measure both the impact velocity and penetration depth. Now here's the block shot from 5 yards. The calibration data is in the notes above, so those interested in performing their own correction calculations as per McPherson's model can do so at their leisure. Average penetration is approximately 12 inches, and pretty much the entire shot charge is contained within the block. The temporary stretch cavity looks intimidating, but based on my hunting experience I think it's a poor indicator of wound potential. The impact pattern is also nice and tight, although not the 3 quarter inch diameter hole I was expecting, so there's likely some slight shot leakage out the side of the wad upon firing. Moving over now, here's the block shot with 3 rounds from 20 yards, and you can see from the calibration data in the notes above that this block calibrated almost exactly the same as the first. Adding another 15 yards in the range to target department had the effect of reducing average pellet penetration by approximately 25%, which is slightly more than what we saw in the previous episode on number 4 buck. The impact pattern was admirable. At 20 yards, just over 50% of the shot column is still hitting the gelatin, and I think this is super impressive from a gun with an improved cylinder choke and a powerful testimonial as to the effectiveness of the Versatite wad. Finishing off this segment of the test, here's the block shot three times from 40 yards and you can see that it too calibrated very close to the first block. Average penetration depth decreased about another 15%. At 7 inches, it's only now 60% of the total penetration we witnessed at 5 yards. With respect to the impact pattern, there were 37 hits on the face of the target, which is only about 15% of the total pellet count and a significant decrease by comparison to what we saw with the number 4 buckload. Wrap it all together, and my opinion is that while the load is likely still quite effective at 20 yards, out at 40, we're seriously flirting with marginal effectiveness. Geese and ducks? Maybe, but for coyotes or anything bigger, I'd really want my gun to be charged with something more than lead BB. Let's finish off the episode with a look at some recovered shot. Here's the contents of an unfired round. There's about 70 of those nickel plated 177 caliber lead pellets in each shell, and they sure look round and shiny. The nickel plating is marketed as increasing the overall hardness of the pellet, thus reducing shot deformation upon firing and increasing overall penetration. I'm not that convinced though, as here's the 67 pellets I recovered from the 5 yard gelatin test block. You can see that there's a significant degree of shot deformation, and it's quite a bit more disfigured than what we witnessed in the unplated hardened lead shot load I tested in episode 1.4. 
Perhaps the Versatite Wad's lack of any cushioning features is the primary culprit, and the nickel plating does in fact prevent the shot from deforming even more than it would if it were unplated, but to say that this load has less deformation than a standard unplated lead load is simply untrue. Moving over now, here's the 107 pellets I recovered from the 20 yard gelatin block and 3 wads I recovered from general shooting. Remember, 3 rounds were fired from 20 yards and that monster pile of shot is more than 50% of the load that wound up in the gelatin block. I still think that's pretty amazing from an improved cylinder barrel. Anyway, this shot does not look that dissimilar to what I pulled out of the 5 yard test block and the conclusion that I draw from that observation is that with this load, firing is the primary mechanism for shot deformation, not the impact with the gelatin. So lastly, let's move over and check out the shot I pulled from the 40 yard block. It still exhibits the same kind of cube like deformation as the shot fired from closer range, which reinforces my theory that most of the shot deformation happens in the barrel as the gun is fired. That one copper plated the steel BB you might have noticed? Yeah, that's the one used to calibrate the gelatin. So that pretty much wraps up this episode where we tested, in 10% ordnance gelatin and at multiple ranges, Hornady's 12 gauge heavy magnum coyote nickel plated lead BB with a versatite wad. Not unlike the number 4 buck we tested in episode 2.1, the shot deforms significantly upon firing, but this is less important than what all those internet experts would have you believe, as the Versatile Wad does an admirable job in keeping patterns very tight right out to our test limit of 40 yards. On the other hand, this load's penetration falls off dramatically as distance increases, enough that I would seriously question its long range effectiveness on any game animal larger than a goose, coyotes included. So in closing, I'd like for you to remember that the format for this test was suggested by a viewer like you, so if there's something you'd like to see tested, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and take care till next time.